Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Good evening countrymen and women. Today is a very very sad day. For Mother Zambia, it's a sad day for the youths. It's a sad day for all of us <clears throat> that have tried our level best to ensure to say that uh, Pamela Chisupe, the young lady that was kidnapped on 13th April uh, by unknown criminals, we've made every effort to ensure to say that she, she's uh, located. We've tried everything that we can. Of course, this issue was being pursued by the police because the police are the best people. They are the people mandated to protect life and property. And when there are such sophisticated type of crimes, it is to the police that we should look to, to solve these crimes. At least to be able to find the culprits of crimes. But I'm afraid that the police have failed us. The police have failed Pamela. The police have failed Pamela's family. The police have failed every Zambian youth that is operating in a booth trying to make a living. We should pass a vote of zero confidence in the police on this matter. This morning, I went to police force headquarters. I was accompanied by my comrade, uh, uh, Ben Hachomba. And we went there because we realized something which the police perhaps do not realize. In issues and cases of kidnapping, every minute counts. Every second counts. Every hour counts. Every minute and every hour that you do not get closer to finding out who the culprits of this kidnapping are is a minute and an hour where the life of the victim fades away. Here we are. The only thing that we've been told by the police since this issue came on social media is that they are investigating. What results have they come up with? Because that's what we went there in the morning to ask. What are the results? What have you found? Have you, found, have you traced the phone numbers? Have you traced the location? What have you found? Lusaka has got cameras everywhere. There are eyewitnesses who saw Pamela leave. And this issue was even reported the very day that Pamela went missing. She was, she was reported missing on 13th. 14th, nothing happened. 13th, nothing happened. The police didn't do anything. 14th, they didn't do anything. 15th, they didn't do anything. 16th, four days later. When the family members decided to say it was too much, they had to leak the video. They leaked the video. It blew out on social media. That's when the police now jumped out in their shoes pretending to say they, they, were, they were doing something. They haven't done anything. And let's be frank and honest with each other. We cannot continue learning about new developments, about this tragedy on social media. We learned through social media that she went missing. We learned through social media that she's being held uh, somewhere. I don't know what that place name, what, what that name is. We are learning through social media again that she's no more. Where are the police? Yesterday when the police or the other day when the police inspector general gave a statement to say that they will engage all resources to make sure they find her. Or did they find her? Did they engage all those resources? Now we are told she's no more. The criminals are on the run. Has the Zambia police mounted any roadblock at all targets and to all border posts to ensure to say that these criminals do not escape? Have they done that? Have they spoken to the immigration? Have they spoken with the, with the Interpol? Have they spoken to all police uh, uh, checkpoints? There is nothing. Are they interested in catching these culprits? Isn't it enough that we have lost a life? That the police at least, at least, at the very least, we expect that the criminals must be tracked down seriously. I've never seen such kind of laser fair attitude exhibited by, by, by Zambia police. Frankly, it's, it's, it's disappointing. And mind you, this is not the first case of a kidnapping of an airtel money booth operator this is not the first case today that's when i was learning 
that there was actually a first case two months ago that was reported about an Airtel mo mobile money operator. I don't know what her name is, but she was kidnapped from Kamala in my watch two months ago. Today, that's when we are learning to say that there was that case. This lady, the, the case died a natural death and she's presumed dead because she's never been found. The only thing or the only one that was found was her child, the one she was with when she was kidnapped. The child was, I think, injured. They, they think the criminals hit the child very badly on the head. And they think that they thought that the child, they had killed the child. Three-year-old child. They thought they had killed the child. But miraculously, the way God is, that child survived. A three-year-old child survived. It was picked by the roadside. People thought maybe the child had been hit by a vehicle. They took her to police. I mean, the, to hospital, she was treated. She's alive and well. And the child has got a story to tell. Young as she is, young as she is, three years, she could remember and recount what happened to her mother. She narrated how her mother was being hit against the wall, hit against the ceiling board by two people that she identified and who she can name. If you want to find out more about this story, uh, inquire with the Spring TV. Spring TV reporter Tito Karama followed this issue up to Kanyama. And Kanyama, that's where we are going tomorrow. Because police is not serious with following up such issues. It's more than likely that the same criminals that have killed uh, uh, that, that have killed Pamela are the same ones that killed the first lady. The first lady of this crime of kidnapping mobile booth operators. It's very, very like, where have they been? They claim to have, Zikta claims to have the best software and sophisticated equipment to track down cause. Even when you they claim that even when your phone is off, they can still track it. Have they tracked the, the criminals that have murdered a young lady? And God knows what else they have done to her. Over the past seven days, seven days, seven days, no clue, Zambia police. No clue, no idea. No hint. No satisfactory report. What are we paying these people for? What are we paying the Zambia police for? If they can't uh, come to the rescue, of people that are kidnapped even when they have the sophistication and the equipment and the software to trace they surprise me these people unless somebody in south see the president then they are very quick they are very quick lightning quick to go after such people a young lady is kidnapped a report is made that there's been a kidnapping for four days they did nothing so who are we going to blame for such kind of uh, uh, atrocities that have happened? Who does the family blame? We also those that video, you know, that's the worst kind of video that that I've ever have ever come across in my life. These guys are operating at a at a, these criminals are operating at a at a whole new level. Even Boko Haram. Even Boko Haram in Nigeria doesn't operate like that. Boko Haram kidnapped I don't know how many hundreds of school girls in Nigeria. They kept them uh, uh, safe. They never tortured them. They never hit them with the iron bands or, or raped them. They, Boko Haram did that, do that. This, this, this kind of sketch, these criminals we are having in Zambia, we are giving them too much room. Zambia police is giving criminals too much room. So what, what message are they sending? To criminals in Zambia. What message is Zambia police sending to criminals in Zambia? That you can commit a crime and you have seven days to run away. That's what they are communicating. The sheer incompetence, slowness, and lack of seriousness in the Zambia police is going to cost life. And it has already been costing lives. I've talked about two incidences of kidnapping here. The first one which you did not know and I did not know until today. The photos are there. This this case was reported. Police never even they never even alerted the nation to say there is such a thing as a kidnapping that had been done. Perhaps, perhaps if they had reported it, if they had told us to say that there was a woman, a first woman mo mobile booth operator who had been kidnapped, perhaps this second thing would have never happened. Because criminals also monitor social media. Criminals also monitor what the how, how police respond to such things. Police haven't even responded heavily. We should have expected that 
they should have put all the resources together in terms of making sure to say that every camera in the city of Lusaka, every video footage on that particular day, every photo, video footage must be reviewed. They must ensure, they must ensure to say that all the border posts are closed. They must have ensured to say that all the checkpoints, all these target checkpoints, they should have had the uh, plain clothes officers checking for these suspects. Because the suspects are already there. We know from social media. Send the police. When it last, they don't know. They don't know. As on social media, we know who the suspects are. We even know the names. We even know the location. Where the first location where Pamela was taken. We know. Zambia police doesn't know. When they say they are investigating, they knock off for 17 hours. They go and sleep. Somebody has, kid has been kidnapped, is being beaten with metal bar throughout the night. She's being tortured. She's being raped. She's being defiled throughout the night. And you are sleeping as Zambia police. You want to wake up and report to the office at 8.30 to continue with investigations. Do you know how precious time is in an issue of kidnapping? Do you know that every second and every minute wasted in an issue of a kidnapping is risking the life of a victim? Should this girl have been maybe the daughter of a minister eh? or the daughter of somebody rich for police to jump up out of their boots and pursue this issue with the seriousness that it deserved? Is it because she's a simple mobile booth operator connected to nobody that they didn't move? How many times has Zambia police told us we are investigating and that investigation actually yields positive results? Phone tracing. It's a simple thing. Phone tracing is a simple thing. The numbers that she transacted with, the last numbers that she transacted with, it was a simple issue of following up. What was the last transaction she, 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 she transacted with? What phone calls were made? Even to her boyfriend, her boyfriend was the first person to be called to say, we have your girlfriend here, can you, can you give us money? They had all those links to pursue. Did they do anything about it? Simple issues. And I'm speaking like this because this is not the first time I've had an engagement with the police on issues of uh, crime. Remember the last time that we had uh, two reported instances of people who were being kidnapped on buses in Lusaka. They were kidnapped. One was picked up uh, from uh, near UTH. The other one was picked up at Cosmopolitan in Chawama. The girl was driven somewhere to York Farm at night. She was bundled off a bus and raped. Fortunately, she was not murdered. She was just raped. She's still alive. The other, the other guy was coming from school uh, somewhere at UTH. He got on a bus. He was also kidnapped, driven to the same place in Chawama. They just got his two iPhones and his laptop and they left him unconscious. Fortunately, they did not kill him. Where are we standing with those cases? I personally pursued these cases. I personally went to the commission of police at, at, at force headquarters. I presented these two people in person. Even their numbers, we, we, we left them, not with any junior officer, with senior officers in the police command. We left those numbers there. Ask me, what has come out of that? Zero. Nothing. Nothing has come out up to now. And we have the best phone tracing equipment. Are you telling me that those, the, those, those criminals threw those two iPhones in the water? Because all two, all two victims, one had two iPhones, they stole those two iPhones. The other one had an iPhone, they stole that, those iPhones, and they withdrew about 500 quarts from the Airtel Money account of the ledge. They, 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 they got away. Up to now, there has been no tracing. We don't even know who we can follow to say, Iwe, my numbers are not tracing up. And I've been constantly calling. It's been over four months when that incident happened, just after the elections. Every month I call to say, are those phones online? Have those phones come online? Can they be traced? I call every time I get it. No, they are, they are not active. So if they are not active, we forget. How, how, how else are we going to find the, these, uh, these criminals? You have got these cameras mounted all over Lusaka on all the main roads. Even in places where you, there, is no, there is no tarmac, you have these cameras. The so-called smart Zambia cameras. Up to now, there has been no footage. For those two early cases where we had the girl that was and the girl with the boy who were kidnapped, the, the girl was raped. We didn't record any deaths. We came down so hard 
I personally went hard on that issue of those kidnappings because one of them ha happened in my ward. And I knew to say if I, if I relaxed as a counselor, if I relaxed as a counselor, if I did not pursue that issue of those, of, of, of those kidnappings on buses, I even brought the issue be, to, to council saying that we must have safety measures and features on all public transport uh, vehicles. And that's why even today when you have, when you're registering you with Ulendo, the most popular taxi service, there are stringent, stringent measures, security measures for, for a taxi driver to register on, on Ulendo so that we keep this issue of criminals being drivers. You get your fingerprints, you get clearance, you get everything. You they get a photo shoot of you and everything. Then they save. Today, it is quiet in Lusaka. We have not recorded any case of people being kidnapped on passengers. Why? Because the criminals, they monitor social media, they, come, they, know, they monitor the news. They knew to say that we had come onto this issue and we had come onto it hard. They knew to say that we were now on the alert and even people were on the alert in terms of getting on buses. They, they have gone quiet. Five months, we've never reported such a case. Where does that case now, what are we witnessing now? It's now gone to Airtel Money agents that's where it has gone who is in charge of ensuring that the security and investigations in such things is carried out it's the police should we have all every time every time as political representatives as councillors or as mps do we every time have to walk to the door knock to the door not the door the ig to say there's this issue can you do your job no we shouldn't these people must be the, the best people, the police must be the best people to have a passion to save life, to save property. They should be the best people to go beyond the call of duty to save lives. Some of us in our wake, we go beyond the call of duty in saving people. Even when it is past working time, it's past 17 hours, you'll be meeting people, it, it, it will be 20 hours, 21 hours, if there's an emergency, you're called, you wake up, you won't say, no, I've knocked off, I'm going home. But the police were sleeping. I can assure you for the whole four days, when the issue of Pamela was reported, she that she has been kidnapped, they were sleeping. They were reporting at 8.30 and knocking off at 17 hours. Even on Thursday, they were knocking off half day, going to, 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 to watch, what do you call it? Police sports day. Even on the whole long weekend Easter, they were relaxing. Somebody has been kidnapped. Somebody is being hit with an iron bar on the forehead. Her hair was, 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 was in tatters. First case that we've had. Actually, second case that we've had. Because the first one, the police never told us. They never knew. They hid it. Is it because they don't have the competence to carry out such investigations? They hid from the public. We, we are only thinking it's Pamela. It's not Pamela. There was another one. By now she's dead. I can assure you. Because it's been four months. The child is there. The mother has never been seen. And she's never been found. Hmm? If we even, even if we give the police to say, okay, this person, clearly, she's gone. Can you find the body? They won't find the body. Because we give criminals too much time to plan and maneuver, kidnap, and even have time enough to plan how they are going to get away. We are told that these criminals got away as early as 05. Because the issue blew out on Tuesday on social media. That's when it blew out. Tuesday it blew out. These criminals, by, when, by, by this early morning, they were out. The police had... They had all the time in the world. They had all the time in the world to track those people. We've heard of people who have been traced on, for, with, with, on phones for, 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 for flimsy kind of cases, useless cases that he insulted someone's wife or threatened someone. They find them. Kidnappers, you can't find them. And there is a whole lot connected to this. These things, we were only watching them on TV. Oh, it has happened in Nigeria. It happens every day in South Africa. It happens in Mexico where you've got drug lords. It happens in these cases like Somalia and what on countries where you've got failed states. That is where the kidnappings happen. There are, are no governments. It's, there are war zones. There are chaos. There are terrorist organizations. We don't have any Al-Shabaab in Zambia. We don't have Boko Haram. We don't have ISIS. Yet this small, this, this first, kind, first of a kind issue happens and the police can't bring up any results. Well, Zikta, what technology do you have? 
Simple phones on an iPhone application, you can trust somebody where they are. Zikta with all your com computers, all your towers, all your satellites. You can't find, you can't even give us a clue about where these criminals are. Now they are on the run. And I can assure you that these guys, if they are planning to cross the border, if they have not crossed the border already, because even the border is porous. The immigration, I don't know if who they are waiting for to be to, to mount up border patrols and log, uh, make sure to say that everybody who's coming in and out. Airports, I don't know. Maybe these guys have even flown through the airport. Because immigration will also be sitting waiting. Eh? No first let us be told by the investigative wings if we can mount up uh, uh, checkpoints. This is not just a, a simple crime in itself. It's a symptom. And I'm talking like this. You, because, mark my words. You are going to see more of these cases happen. I'm talking like this because there will be more cases that this that will happen. This is only a second case. And when something happens twice, you can bet that it's going to happen again. We are speaking like this because we don't want to lose any more lives because of the incompetence of, of people that are supposed to be looking after us, protecting us. Eh? So, countrymen and women, it is what it is. I think we must brace ourselves for the worst. Those of you who are saying the video is fake, wait until the body is found or if it, if it will ever be found. I don't know. Otherwise, at this point in time, we must prepare for the worst. We must prepare for the worst. It's highly unlikely that Pamela is alive. The last time we saw her, it was on the video. She was begging for her life and she was pleading for us to do something about it. You heard her words, balance fire. But then she said, you know, Sunday. She even gave us a clue to say on Sunday she was alive. On Sunday, she gave us a clue. Na pasande mo nene fubalenge. That while she was bleeding from the from the forehead everywhere, she gave us a clue. Today is what? Wednesday. Wednesday night. You think these criminals will be so naive to leave a trace of the crime that they have done, and they know that uh, uh, the entire country is upset? We are looking for them. Not the police, us, the citizens. We are the ones who are interested in this. The best information that we've had about the whereabouts of, of Pamela has not come from the police. It has not come from Zikta. It has come from citizens like you and me who have decided to break the silence at their own risk. They might even be arrested screaming to say, no, you are, how do you know you're a suspect? But they have broken the silence. Police is behind. So let's wait for a statement tomorrow. I don't know if we're even going to get a, set a statement tomorrow from the police. Let's wait. But you are, are they are behind. Me, I want to even you listen to that statement. For what? Let's just go and start mobilizing ourselves, looking around the entire Lusaka, Kafiwe, Chilanga, looking for a body. That's what we should be doing by now. Let's start looking for a body. Let the police continue giving their statements. For me, they have failed. And their failure has costed the life. Two lives, actually. But police. God bless you. All right, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutati Mpondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.